first question is a finance question. It's a financial document. You guys need to always be ready when it comes to financial documents because there are different types of financial documents and you never really know which type of financial document you are going to be getting from pay slips to till slips and so on and so on. So what you need to do is that you need to make sure um, you do as many as possible. Let's look at the one that we have been given over here. So this particular financial document is from Woolworths. So we can see we've got Woolworths over there and you know how I like first analyzing before I go into it. And we can see that it was sent to Susan Fisser, um, PO Box, so on and so on, that's the address. And then it's got a statement date and a payment due date and the account number and so on and so on. So we can see that um, Susan is supposed to be paying monthly. So we can see that. And this is actually a loan statement and it says to us transaction details. Then we've got all the dates. We've got the store head office going on over there. It's always important um, to know how to analyze before you can go in. Then we've got all the types of transactions that have been described under this particular column. It says to us debit order payment, monthly account fee, um, total interest, um, and so on and so on. And then it tells us here that the, the, the loan was taken on the 29th um, and it goes on and on and on basically. And it's got the opening balances, the interests and the closing balances. And if we go all the way down, we can then see um, that we've got an outstanding balance over there of 10,451.63. And then we have an amount, um, loan amount, available and then we've got the next installment that is due so we have all this now that we are going to be using in terms of this annexure that we have been giving and it says to us here um, that annexure a shows a revolving credit loan taken out from Woolworths Financial Services. So now you know that Woolworths has a financial service and it says to us a revolving credit plan is a loan. So now it gives us the definition of what a revolving um, credit plan is. So don't panic too much when you come across such words and you don't really know um, what they mean. So it says to us, a revolving credit plan is a loan where a person can reuse um, all or part of the money that has been paid back towards the loan without applying for it again. So from what I'm understanding, this question is saying to us that a revolving credit loan is basically an account where you borrow money and every time you pay money, um, you can still use that money all over again. So you keep on just digging into that hole, whatever the case is. So I also know about loans is that you have a particular um, amount. So you cannot say, oh, I took out this credit revolving loan of 10,000 and now I can go and ask for 20,000. No, it sticks at that 10,000. You can only play around along that 10,000. So let's look at the first question that we are given. It says to us, identify the borrower of the revolving credit loan. So the, the borrower in this particular case is the person who's borrowed the money. And we know without even going back to the statement that it's Susan. Okay, so that one is already answered for us. So Susan is the person that went and borrowed. Let's look at 1.1.2. It says, write down the loan amount available um, on this statement. So the loan amount that is available on this particular statement, let's look at the statement here, and it says to us, loan amount available. So the the amount that is currently available that this person um, can play around with is 500. I'm going to write that down just for order's sake, okay? 1.1.2. 1. 1. So the amount that is available is 548.37. And that's simple. It's already written in the statement. So it's not something um, that we have to go and calculate. And we are given two marks for that. So it's important for you to look at how many marks you are being given and the amount of work that you're going to be putting in. So 1.1.3 says, write down the number of statements 
the borrower will receive in one year. How do we know that? Always look for the clues, okay? I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna show you a clue that we have been given that I saw at the beginning when I was reading the statement. That's why it's important for us to be able um, to analyze these statements. Let's go up, I wanna, I wanna show you what I saw that could help me. It says to me that this person is gonna be paying monthly, okay? That in itself is a great, great, great clue. So what does it mean? It means that this person in a year is going to be paying 12 statements because we've got 12 months in a year. Or you can say one month times 12, which is still 12 statements. So I'm just giving you um, a way in which we can do all of these basically. We're still not sweating, um, we're still taking it easy. The next question says to us, explain the term debit order. So we need to know that we will be asked to explain certain terms. And if you don't know, for instance, debit order. As a student or a learner, I didn't know what a debit order was. So how would I figure out what a debit order is in this particular case? Let's go check out um, what the particular trends have been in terms of debit order. Let's go see. So, is there anything that says debit order there? Yes, definitely. Debit order payment. So, the debit order payment, that is what the debit order payment is. So, anything else going down? I don't see anything else um, going down in terms of what a debit could be. But what else do I see? What else do I see in terms of debit order? A debit order, a debit order is money um, that the creditor is going to pull from you. So it's the money that I need to be paying um, on a monthly basis or on a quarterly or whatever the case is. So in this particular case, Susan has to pay um, monthly. So the debit order is money that is the repayment. Okay, so it's money that's taken from Susan to pay into the revolving account. I'm going to write that down so that we can process that. So a debit order. And also remember, guys, um, that you don't have to have the same answer as your neighbor. So a debit order is, a, is an amount... that is pulled or taken from your account. So a debit order is a amount that's pulled from your account to pay back, to repay, um, uh, to repay debt. That's what I'm going to say. And can you see? how nice and rough that is. So you need to be easy on yourself when you are answering such questions that have definitions. So anything that's close to that will be considered. Don't think that, oh my goodness, um, what am I going to write? This is not going to make sense, okay? 1.1.5 says to us, calculate the number of days from the statement date to the payment due date. So we want to know, and where's the clue again? The clue is all the way up in our statement. So let's look at this. It says to us here, statement date. So this is the statement date and this is the statement due date. So we want to know um, how many days exist in between. So another thing um, that we can do to find out, well, is count. Um, I would certainly just count using sticks or whatever the case is because if we were to go in and use um, subtraction, how would we do it? Let's see. So it's, 2000, it's 14 Jan to 8 Feb. How many marks is that? Another two marks. So 1.1.5. We are saying that with this particular statement, it's from the 14th of January all the way to the 8th of February. 
and we know that January has 31 days. That's another lesson for another day. So how would I do it? Basically, I would say 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, and if I were to use frequencies, it, it would also be very helpful. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. I know the January is up to 31 days. Then 1, 2 February, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Look at how nice and easy that's going to be for me to count because I know that this represents 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So I know it's going to be there for 26 days. And in this particular case, I do not assume they'd be um, asking you to show any type of calculation in terms of that. So let's look at the last question in terms um, of what we've been given here. So the last question in terms of what we have been given here, it says to us, calculate the closing balance um, of the loan taken on the 29th of April um, of that date. So we want to look at the value of A. Let's go look and see what the value of A um, in this particular case could be. Oh, there it is. So this is the A that we are calculating. And in this A that we are calculating, what we do want to do is that we want to look at the opening balance number one. So if this is the opening balance, that's the money that I have um, in my account when it opens. That's what opening balance means. And then the interest that is being charged is the money obviously on top, the extra money. So interest is extra money that is being charged. And then Susan went and made a payment of 221 rand and 89. So what am I going to be doing here? First things first. I'm going to add the interest to the opening balance because that automatically is going to tell me how much Susan um, is owing at that particular time. And then I'm going to add the payment. If someone makes a payment, you add that amount because they are putting money into um, that account. Nice. We we'll use our calculator for this one. That's going to be 6000 859.99. I'm going to add the interest to this account, which is 144.04. And then um, I know, now I know that this is how much Susan owes. So Susan then owes um, 7,004 rand and three cents. That's how much Susan owes in this particular case. But now, because that's how much Susan owes, and then she comes in and she pays the amount, it means that I'm going to take money from this. So let me first go and um, do what I've just done on my calculator. So what I've done on my calculator is what the examiner would also want to see as well. So it's one of those things where you need to show your calculations. Please, please, please. Okay? So in order for us, to show our calculations in this particular one, we are going to say 6,859.99 plus the interest, so I am going to just put it as money over there, which is 144 rand and 4 cents, okay? This is the money um, that Susan owes. So now Susan goes and pays. And why am I subtracting it? I'm subtracting it because you can see over here, every time Susan makes a payment, it's counted as negative over there. Why is it counted as negative? Because she's making um, a payment into every account. Look at that as well, payment. And if you look at that payment as well, it's got a negative there and another negative over there. Okay, look at the trends across if you feel like you are stuck. So we're going to subtract the 221.89 from that amount um, that we had. So I'm going to say minus 
um, 221.89. So that then gives us 6,782. 6,782.14. Okay? Stunning. So in terms of that financial document, do you see um, the common trends in it? Yes. Know what an opening balance is. Know what a closing balance is. Know what a debit order is. Um, those are the type of things that are going to be helping you.